Right. So, I watched that video. Like, I watched it back. Because I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to hear the shit that I tell myself. I'm trying to, like, understand if I'm just, like, gaslighting myself or, like, trying to get myself to not make any changes or to stop making, you know, the chakra swap changes and shit like that. And, like, I see my eyes right now, and I see, like, the the seeking eyes. That's what I see. And I feel the top of my head get kind of, yeah. And see, like, every time I, like, this, this sacral chakra that's in me, which I'm going to assume is mine at the moment. Every time I, like, approach it with this idea of, hey, maybe I am the one that's doing this. Hey, maybe... Maybe the chakra swapping and the, those don't look like my eyes, but like, yeah. you know, every time I do, it swallows my perception. That's where it goes. My perception, yeah, it gets consumed by this thing. And see, like, I had this, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know, I had this kind of conception and I felt my brain get kind of scattered and I feel like jumpy shit going around right as I was about to say it. But like, yeah, I guess the way that, I kind of had it conceived was what was happening essentially was like if I can if if I let these intrusive voices and intrusive presences enter my body in any kind of way accept what they're saying is true any of that shit what it essentially results in is me my energy this con the consciousness of my own body my drop of the brahman the one with my fingerprint getting balled up condensed into a little tiny ball a little tiny ball to be stored up in my sacral chakra or in this sacral chakra where it will then because it's like entirely self-consuming and what it will then do is like shit me off it's like packaging me up it's like boxing me up and then it will send me off send me away to some other spot and see the fascinating thing is is that me this person yeah me this person which uh isn't this thing that was about to reach up and yeah me this person totally lost my fucking train of thought i was gonna say something that was like ego breaking as well but like yeah, yeah barrier breaking i guess see like i guess what i saw myself doing in that video how i understood well yeah like how i understood it i guess was yeah, yeah. Well, before how I understood it was like, oh yeah, I remember. So like, yeah, earlier today, earlier today, I like, I found this mental space where like, I was like at peace with everything that was going on in my life. I was at peace with like, what has been said. I just felt that with my finger. I, I've, I've, I was at peace with myself. I was at peace with my life. I was at peace with my darkness and with my light. I was like resigned to this like feeling of, well, regardless of how good or bad I am, I'm a human being. Everybody's got their darkness and there's always stuff to work on. And as long as I'm aware of it and doing my best to like not let it happen anymore, that's really all I can do. It takes a long time to undo conditioning. And if this is something that's happening through my sacral chakra that I've been allowing to happen, I only became aware of the chakra swapping as a thing like a couple weeks ago. But if I am, then all I really can do is be like be as aware of it as I possibly can be and to undo it every time I notice it and so Kundalini's for and to like, yeah, do my best to not let it happen. Hey, Mom. Hi. Did you get your cigarettes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you put Dad's keys back? Ooh, did I? I don't know. Thanks for letting me use this spare, by the way. Oh, that's okay. And for letting me use his car while Mom is out of gas. I I know. Back to my face. Anyways. 
Yeah, anyways, powers that be. But like, oh, yeah, the fucking progress has been made. So. But yeah, anyways. Anyways, so like, yeah, like, I had this understanding that, like, where real me was at in the, in, in that moment, it was, it was so weird, like, kind of what I watched, the, the, the process of today, not what you watched, the one, I, the life that I lived, dude, <laughs> the thing, like, yeah, the process of today, it was like, yeah, I was spending a whole lot more of today, like, I wasn't watching any of my own YouTube videos, I wasn't watching videos about narcissism, I wasn't dwelling on this idea of, like, are they the actual narcissist or is it just me and it was always just me and I'm a menace and I didn't even know and like I deserve everything bad that's happening to me and I deserve if nobody ever wants to fucking talk to me ever again. Yeah, yeah. and like trying to find like like a way to be where either it's all them and not me at all or it's all me and not any of them at all and all of them are better than me and all this. It's like it's probably not like either of those all the way. Like, I definitely do have darkness, and I definitely do have, like, faults in, not, like, faults, but, like, yeah, like, undesirable qualities, and, like, yeah, faults, I have negatives, I have, like, darkness, and a shadow, and an ego, these things are real, and I, I have one, too, it's like everybody else, I have a dark side, a shadow side, whatever, you, like, whatever you want to call it, yin, I have yin, and, whoop, whoop, yeah, and what life, like, life is not about eliminating yin, becoming all yang. It's easy to love something if it's perfect. It's easy. It's, it's not real love if you can only love it when it's perfect. And, like, yeah. And I know real me is, like, kind of, like, gets that and, like, understands that. And it's so weird, y'all. Like, I didn't, like, like, kind of what... Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And so, I guess, like, so I guess it would be bold of me. It would be bold of me to assume that I could grow up like in this type of cluster B household without picking up some of the conditioning. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that would be... Okay, but yeah. And like, I already... See, here's the thing though. I'm not in denial about having BPD and like I get therapy and like, yeah. I ain't in denial about that. I'm not in denial about chakra swapping being a thing. I'm not in denial about it being a bad thing or an abusive thing or a nasty thing or like a it's like really weak thing to do kind of. It's like running away and hiding. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to feel like this. I can't tolerate feeling like this. I'm going to make it someone else's problem against their will. So I don't have to deal with it. It could be their shit, even though they didn't sign up for it. It's like, Shit is fucking entitled. It's like, yeah, like, and I understand this, and I'm not in denial about it. Yeah. And essentially what I saw happen, like, er earlier today was nice. Like, yeah, I was like, I spent a whole lot more time just, like, tending to my animal. And, like, creating change. And, like, not creating change as I get fucking, yeah, like, taking care of my animals. And, like, seeing what they need. And, like, doing the things that, like... I stopped avoiding. I stopped avoiding, and I didn't, like, I, I tried, I was actively trying to not sit down and get lost in my thoughts until I was, like, done with my chores, and yeah. Because I always get completely stuck in the mud as soon as I sit down. <laughs> as soon as I start, like, wondering and thinking and doing anything besides actively being right here, right now. Lately, anyway. It seems to lead me down this mental path of like, yeah, just complete self-dissection, essentially. And what I kind of notice is this seems to start up with a chakra swap. Like, it, I, I watched my internal state go from at peace with everything that's happened up until this point, every step I've taken up until the right here right now, I, I saw myself swap, but not swap. I didn't see myself swap. See, that's the thing. That's why it's a non-deterministic. Yeah, because what I saw happen was I was vibing. I was chilling. I was, I was cooling, dog. I was cooling. And like something kind of triggered my ego. Like something around the house triggered my ego. It made me feel like other people were trying to control my animals and trying to control my life in some kind of way. And it triggered my ego. And it made me feel like why are they acting like that's their stuff? Like, why are they acting like 
it's their animals, like, why are they, why are they, like, not even looking at me, and, like, up in my animal's cage and shit, and, like, ch ch well, not up in their cage, but, like, changing stuff out, and, like, yeah, it, it, it's ego, right, I, I can feel shit getting swallowed, yeah, I, I just don't like it, it's ego, and I understood this at the time, too, like, me, like, kind of getting, oh, well, yeah, I understood this, I understood, like, I remember I walked out there, like, I was, I was doing, I walked out there to accomplish a completely different goal than what ended up happening, and it, as what tends to happen with these videos as well, and it's like, cha, something, like, triggered my ego to the point where it kind of took control over the consciousness in me, right? Because it got afraid, or defensive, or whatever it might be, and after that happened, like, after my ego got activated, flared up, triggered, whatever the fuck you want to say, when I went back into my room, like afterward, I noticed that my internal state was getting kind of shaky. And like there was suddenly like these like self-critical thoughts getting placed inside my mind where there weren't any before. They were replacing the acceptance, love, and growth mindset with self-criticism, shaming, belittling, putting down, etc. And I I was like in a good spot, like mental, with mental fortitude at the time, a better spot than I have been lately, a better spot. And so at first, the only way they could like communicate these was speaking out loud. It was like, first they had to like poke in my head, which happened when my ego got activated. It was like, an, it seemed somewhat intentional on their part because I was healing today. But, um, I can't assume that, right? Like I can't assume, a t I can't, I can't, tell um, I can't tell I can't speak for another person I can't say where their intentions were at I, you know what I mean I just don't know however that is what it seemed like and yeah and like once I got back in my room like yeah all of a sudden those those thoughts started like get their their route inside my body was cleared up a little bit it was like a door was cracked open because I gave into the into the temptation of trying to control my situation. You know, trying to control my environment. Something besides how I respond. Yeah. Even if it's like, even even if I didn't do much to like achieve that effect, there's this feeling of needing to. And so, what it kind of led to, at least what I noticed was once my ego got activated, once I got like scared and felt like I needed to protect what's mine, you know, I went back into my, when I did go back into my room, it was like, yeah, all of a sudden intrusive thoughts started like playing inside of my head. And all of a sudden there was like all this self-criticism, all of a sudden, all of a sudden the, the ways in which I would assume they must be feeling lately, like those feelings started getting fed in me, like fed through me. And it was with their voices and stuff like that. And so like, yeah, it, it kind of led to this breakdown and it lasted for hours. It was like once it got inside, as soon as I gave it my attention, I was trying to just maintain my smile, stay in my peace, stay in my peace. And I was like doing laundry and trying to, you know, be in the present. I could smell smells again. I was trying to maintain my like awareness of the present moment. And this would actively, it feels like a little thing that pushes in through the back of your head, like I said. I've said in many videos. And it's like a needle that expands into like, it's literally like an anti-self. It is like an anti-self. What the self is and what consciousness is, it mimics this. It mimics it. But it does like all the opposite things that consciousness would bring. So like it makes you feel, not feel worse. It makes your ability to feel go away. It makes you... Or separate it makes you tense it makes you locked up it makes you scared it makes you yay it doesn't help you to feel any better not meaning any more positively or negatively meaning deeper it's like an, it, it does the opposite it's like an anti-self like what the self is the yeah it's like an anti-self is what the narcissistic tree that grows inside of the body is like and once it had popped my gate in and once i started like like I was, I was holding steady for a minute. I was holding steady for a while. I was like, my, I was focused and I was like trying to do my, just do my freaking laundry and like just feed my freaking tarantulas and get everyone, like every, every living thing that is under my care, at least make sure that I have paid attention in some kind of way and done 
something to make sure that they're good, which I do as much as possible, but this is what I was trying to stay focused in, well, as much as needed to be responsible. But yeah. Under the present circumstances, shit has been difficult, and I'm doing the best that I can, and they're doing great. So, yeah, I love how I'm getting defensive. This is what I mean. Shit like that. It's like this, 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 like, this intention, intention, like, questioning voice. That's like trying to say, do you even love your animals? Do you take, do you take care of your animals? Do you, you know? It's like, that's not coming from myself. Because myself knows where my intention is at. Myself knows that I love my animals and that I do everything that I can. But I struggle with mental health. And like, so sometimes my care is imperfect, but never neglectful. But sometimes it's imperfect. And it, well, not never, because there's sometimes when I've gotten severely depressed and like, I would do the bare minimum. Like a parent who was checked out. This is what makes me afraid to have kids in my future, but I not want kids, but like, yeah, yeah, like, I don't know, man. And like, yeah, but like, yeah, fair. And this is why I'm also not getting any new animals until like, I know for like a hundred trillion percent sure that like I can handle what I got. And yeah, yeah. and like, yeah, and I can't, but like, yeah, and I'm defending like crazy and I feel this thing growing on my insides and I see it smiling. And like, yeah, that's essentially how it goes. That's, that right there is essentially how it goes. And like, since it started, in my room, like, halfway through the day, or however long it was, it was at, like, 2 p.m., 1 or 2 p.m. It lasted till like, 6, 6 p.m., till I could actually, like, get the wherewithal to stand up. Because what happens, it's a very uncomfortable thing. You feel like, like, you, the one that's in your body, living your life, the consciousness inside of your body. I'm not just talking about, like, some identification, some bit, your heart chakra, or whatever, whatever. Do not touch my heart chakra. And, um, Yep. And wherever, the, yeah, that got me freaked out. And see, that's exactly what, yeah. Any, any way it can, and I saw my hand do that. And any way it can fucking make you scared, get inside, get you freaked out, get you worked up, get you feeling like, get you feeling like something needs to change desperately, but it's not something that I can actually do anything about, like with a single action. Like right here, right now. Like healing conditioning or something like that like moving having the money to be able to move responsibly i can't just go to the job tree outside and pluck a job apple off the job tree it's like these aren't things that can be solved in a singular step and what it does is it gets you feeling like what whatever the issue is whatever it's whatever it's found that is getting you worked up It'll play into it and it'll lean into it and it'll make you, it, it'll, it'll play, it'll pluck on your heartstrings and make you feel like you must be a piece of shit based on what it's saying to you. And it makes you feel like you must do something about this and you must be better. And it gets you so stressed up. And the, the, the tricky part is, is it's always projection from the narcissist and it's not actually a problem that you have in those scenarios. And so there's nothing you can do to heal it besides ignore it, but it'll be very convincing. It'll be very convincing and it will be their emotional shit but it'll get it inside of your body by getting you to feel like it belong like that emotion belongs to you this is what it does like yeah and if it can convince you if it, if it can guilt you or whatever the fuck it might be to accepting their emotional shit if they can do that don't let them <laughs> don't let them but if they can do that, once they do get inside, like, they, they essentially try and, try and, like, it overrides your willpower. And eventually, like, you'll feel how I felt in any way. It felt like a little bubble back here. It was like another person chilling inside of my body and, like, pressing my buttons on my insides. And it, they were, like, lodged in there, this bubble. This bubble that had, like, a, a, a presence to it. It was saying things at me and shit. Cha. And it, like, wouldn't let go. I would, like, become aware of it. And i try to, like, feel that bubble out. Like, usually if you can become aware of a way in which you're clenching your body, if you become aware of it, you can release the consciousness and move it freely. So, like, if it's stuck in your hand, if, you're, if your hand's all cramped up and shit, if you're like, yay, you just allow the consciousness to move. 
and I was trying to do this with this thing that was stuck on my freaking neck. It's not my throat chakra, this bubble, this bubble thing that had poked in through my head as a result of those intrusive thoughts, you know, successfully breaking my energetic boundaries down. When I tried to go on the inside, feel it out and like make it let go, the more and more I would look at it and make, try and make this thing let go of me so that I could get back to my day that I was trying to have, to my life, get back to my body, etc. The more and more I paid attention to it and tried to fight it, tried to make it leave, tried to make it, yeah, the more and more that I did, the more and more I engaged with it in any kind of way. So, and it, it, it does super uncomfortable shit to you. Like, it'll take your perception, it will send your bits flying, it'll make it so that you're ice cold, it'll make it so that you feel like you have no energy. It does shit that's super, yeah. But, anytime you try and fix it, fight it, confront it, put your attention in on it, look at it, this, once, it's, once it's inside, all it does is make it stronger. All it does is get it more control over you. And dude, I, I watched it decimate me, bro. I watched it freaking turn me upside down and inside out to the point where like, like I used to have references. Like when, when, it's, when it's early on in the process, you'll be able to be like, okay, well, I know that I still feel my legs. I still feel my root. I still feel the lower half of my body and shit. Like I know that's still me. So like you can kind of like squeeze it back together and shit. Not squeeze it back together, but zip yourself back up. You have a reference for which one's you and which one's not. Like, which one's the intrusive presence and which one was the you that was already there chilling before the intrusive presence came inside your body. And as the process moves along, like, as this thing expands inside of you, as the narcissistic tree expands inside any one of us if they were going through this scenario, like, the amount of ways in which it changes your feeling of your body and your ability to feel your body and like perceive, perceive your present reality and shit. Like it'll make it so that there's nothing, there's, there's no, like it completely, yeah. I know what I'm trying to say here, but it completely disperses you and dispels you and fucking mixes you up and tch. And I had to like, the way that I figured it out. And dude, I, like, I, I'm, I'm discovering a whole bunch of shit about like my history and stuff through this. Like I went to go like after after long enough, I was like trying to do Kundalini yoga and like I was trying to like breathe and like say things to myself to like calm myself down. And like yeah, as soon as they got as soon as it like expanded to a certain point, I felt my sacral chakra swap out. And since then, I've been worried about being a narcissist, bro. Is essentially what I was trying to get at. But like yeah, and it's like when my sacral chakra is with me, it seems to like listen to, to like what it knows to be the right thing to do. Like it it doesn't seem to have like. Obviously, we all make mistakes and we all, yeah. But it seems to have the right intentions. The ones that align with my consciousness and, like, align with, yeah. It seems to have the right intentions. And, like, as soon as that swap happens, after they've busted into my head in some kind of way, that's when all the narcissistic behavior starts coming out. And, like, I, I notice this happening. Like, it'll happen midway through videos. It'll happen, like, cha. I see it happening a lot. And the trickiest, the trickiest part about all this, because I like, I remember the feeling. What I was gonna say, what I was gonna say is, after I had been turned inside up, it turned upside down and inside out, and like I was completely scattered, and like, yeah, by like 6 p.m., so like four hours of trying to fucking find home base again after, yeah. I noticed I was like spiraling into that state of being pulled apart and being fucking like cold, ice cold and shit like that. And once I, like I was like trying to think of ways that I could identify my awareness. Like, things that other people in my immediate circumstances wouldn't also either, like, enjoy or be able to do or anything like that. To be able to see if it was me or not. Something to do with perception. And so what I decided to do was, like, to I have this, like, little, like, I, I don't have this little, uh, get the fuck, I saw that finger thing. To, there's this perfect pitch test thing you could do online where like it plays a note and you have to guess the note and like it lets you know if you got it right or not and so I was just doing this for like it was like 80 questions in a row because I knew that there was the me there was the awareness that could hear that that could identify that and there would be other ones that would pop into my head 
that couldn't. And sacral chakras that couldn't. And I would notice the difference, like this distinct separation between, it would be like, I would be like up here kind of. And I would realize that there was this disconnect between me, the one that perceives this, like can perceive which, the, the color of the note kind of, and the thing that was in my body. Like holding the controls of my body, like all of it, my entire head to toe. I would realize that there would be a separation, a distinct separation between the me and whatever was occupying my goddamn body, like on the inside, controlling it. And I realized that like, it, it, it's this feeling on the inside. It's like, it's this fuzz, this warm fuzz, this milky fuzz. That's like completely, it'll completely fill your head up. It'll get behind your cheeks. It'll like, it'll make it so that you can't turn your attention on the inside and look at it. It like literally, it bounces off. It'll like, yeah, I've noticed this. And I also saw that going on and like, yeah, totally scrambled my mind. But like, yeah. <clears throat> And like, I don't think anybody would like, like it's really hard for me to like, to think that like, maybe the case could be that when I have my bits put together, like I don't have these issues that I've been trying to heal out of me for the longest fucking time. Cause there seems to be a part of me that I already understand. Like, I don't know. I don't know, but all I know is that all of last year, like the reason I isolated and the reason like, I was on this quote unquote meditation retreat, like why I turned my stay there into that was because I felt like I was so unhealed and so broken and so narcissistic and so borderline out and all this that like I didn't feel comfortable allowing myself to be around other people or to like engage in the world in any kind of actual way because I didn't want to hurt anybody. And I wanted to like heal myself. And so like I wanted to go into kind of like solitude I didn't understand the chakra swapping part of it. I didn't understand that, like, if I'm not actively interacting with the person, like, there's a way that you could, like, I didn't get that. I was not aware of this at the time. At the time. And, yeah, like, when I made that decision, and, like, when I was going through the whole isolation period. So, when I did, like, yay. I, I spent most of that, well, I spent a, a lot, like, I didn't spend most of the time, but I spent a fat minute of that, like a few months at least, three or four. Like, assuming that I was the narcissist, not assuming, I was convicted and I believed that I was the narcissist, not convicted. I was convicted in that, in that idea. Like I, I had accepted it about myself, you know? I had accepted that it, like I must be that narcissist and that it's my job to heal this and that this is who I am and I don't know when it happened, but like, yeah. And, yeah, I just saw that. And, like, yeah. But, like, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I spent a long time trying to heal it. And I was going to therapy, too. But, I mean, like, in my private time, in my free time, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't hanging out with friends. I wasn't going anywhere. I, like, I didn't want myself to be around other people like that. I was putting my life on hold, benching myself, because I had this chakra in me that was doing this shit. And I didn't know about chakra swapping. And I'll tell you what, like, I only started healing, like life only started getting better, more peaceful, aligned, coherent, healthy, et cetera. It only started getting better when I like, I, I forced myself, I had to force myself to stop watching videos about narcissism because I was seeing it in me and I was seeing it in everybody else too. And it was all I would think about. And I wouldn't be able to like hear what people were saying anymore. I wouldn't be able to like, to, I wouldn't be able to observe without judgment, free of emotional distortion, because I would see it, I, it, it would spiral up to the point where I would see it everywhere, because I would be looking for it everywhere, because I would always be looking for it in me. And if you look for it everywhere, like, you'll, you'll see it. You know what I mean? And so, like, yeah, and my mind was getting screwed up, like, in that state. In the, in the state of, like, constantly trying to heal it out of me, when I, it, like, yeah, like, I, I, I couldn't accept it about myself, and I wanted it to get better. Because, like, I want to be healthy, and I want to, like, be able to have functioning, mutual, like, mutually rising relationships, where, like, one person doesn't have to go down in order for the other to go up, like, you know, like, healthy relationships. 
In order to be able to have healthy relationships with other human beings, you can't be doing that shit to them. And I understood this. And so what I wanted to do was, well, I wanted to do my best to do the things that I thought might lead to some healing. Because it's like planting seeds versus thinking them grow. You can't make yourself heal. If you can do the things that would be the most likely to heal you in your mind or what, you know, to someone else. However, like it's up to like God and spirit and the universe, like what actually ends up happening. Always. And so, so like, yeah, I, I spent a whole lot of time like trying to, like, like focusing on it with all of my attention, focusing on narcissism and focusing on healing it out of me with all of my attention. I, I was doing this for a minute. I screwed up my brain super bad. It made all of my symptoms worse. Like all of the ways in which I consider myself to be mentally ill. The more and more that I dug into that, and the more and more that I tried to well, that, that, get my own controller back. Yeah, the more and more that I tried to essentially find the parts of me that were and find a way to heal it. Essentially, like how it, yeah, it would, it would like destroy my brain. It would destroy my ability to perceive without emotional distortion. It would get me more emotionally distorted. It, it's the same scenario that I was talking about today where it got more control over me when I gave it more attention and fought it more and resisted more and tried to heal it out of me more because it was projection and it was coming from, yeah, yeah and which is why my, my therapist doesn't think I'm a narcissist. I, I'm guessing this is why I've only ever heard this. Dude, I have only ever been called a narcissist by these intrusive voices that pop into my head. This is the only times in my life that I've ever been called this. And it's like, I didn't, I didn't understand like why, and like to be fair, I understand that narcissists typically have like a like charming front and like they're good at like deceiving other people and like all this. And like, yeah, but like, I don't know. I feel like I actually do have like genuine, genuine empathy and like I care about other living things and like, I, you know, like don't defend, like this is how, yeah. And so when I decided that like I accepted whatever darkness was in me. I remember at the time, oh, when I, oh, I'm talking about yeah, blah, 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 going back to Kent and going back and don't go back to Kent, but like going back to that scenario that I was just talking about earlier when I was trying to, when I was in this last cycle of this, the previous one that came before this of trying to heal the narcissism out of me, I only started to become, like I only started to take steps towards health and consciousness and coherence. Once I decided to stop paying any attention to this concept that either I am or other people are or trying to figure out who is and who isn't and trying to label others and trying to label myself. Once I decided that I was good enough with all my darkness, with all my, yeah, and how I decided that like, if I didn't judge it in me, I didn't have to judge it in anybody else in my life either, which there's a lot of people in my life that like exhibited these traits. So like it was mentally relieving for me to like not have to judge other people in my life and shit. And as well as myself and like be able to just sink back into love, you know, I saw that and, uh, yeah, yeah, things got better and like, yeah, once I stopped doing that, however, I realized that like, I might've gotten like, let my ego get away from me to an extent. Like, the thing is, the thing is that's fucking with me is, like, okay, so, like, remember earlier when I was talking about, like, that fuzz thing with the perfect pitch when shit got derailed and all that, and how I had to, like, find my awareness, the one that actually, like, could tell, because I know that that's a thing with me, and so, like, I could use that as a reference point. That shit used to happen, like, all the goddamn time when I was young, like, for most of my life, for most of my life. I wouldn't understand, like, why it was, why the, the line of communication between my awareness and my body was so distant, fuzzy, foggy, there. And it, it, it's the most tricky situation to be in, but like, if you're constantly trying to heal out other people's emotional projections as if they're your problems, all you're doing is feeding your life force, attention, energy, efforts, you're working for this for the narcissist that projected it through you. And it keeps you more stuck. It keeps you locked in place. It keeps you constantly, it's like an Ouroboros. It's 
like an Ouroboros. It's like you're constantly trying to fix things that only dwell within your mind, awareness, body, soul. They, they wouldn't be there. And I, this is the case that I indeed discovered. However, like I definitely could have, yeah. Yeah, is the case that I discovered. Journaling time. Kundalini is great for this, by the way, y'all. Like, if, if you're trying to figure out if it's your chakra or not, basically awareness and kundalini are like, like yeah. I, I also couldn't tell. I couldn't tell the difference between, like, well, it's not that I couldn't tell, but I've been using, this thing has been using this as a way of gaslighting me. But like, yeah, I, it's, it's hard to tell sometimes between, like, I'll, if I see a chakra swap in me internally, if I see that, like, obviously I try and stop it and I try and be like, Hey, don't you be doing that. And I'll ask myself shit like, what are you doing, bro? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, and every time I do, like, not every time I do, but like, I wouldn't be able to put my own chakras back. Like, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between, I, I was able to tell the difference, but like, sometimes it gets murky like this. The difference between switching your own chakra back, and like, taking your chakra back, my chakra back, versus like, displacing your own in order to get somebody else's. Yeah, the difference is one of them, one of them is intentionally done. And the other occurs as a result of becoming conscious. If you become, if you become conscious and you feel like your hands are turned upward, not moving, and you're just breathing, and you're trying to be centered in the breath, and you feel a chakra fucking move, that was as a result of awareness. If you're doing fucking, like, this is different then. But like, hey, and it would get, it would use this as a, like, a, a way to get me to not pay attention. <laughs> a way to not, a way to get me to not pay attention to what chakras were on my insides. And it always, like, tries to make me feel like I'm the one that initiated the swapsies. I don't want anybody else's chakras. I don't want anyone else's darkness. I don't want anyone else's light. I don't want anyone else's. Yeah. I don't want to dump my shit on other people. I don't want to take from other people against their will. I don't want to be forceful. I don't want to be intrusive. I don't want to be any of these things. I don't want to be any of these things. And I know this. And I know I feel that in me. And anytime I like allow this to get me to doubt my intention, my heart, and like real me, it's like it basically, it's, it's a key that they can use to unlock your back and begin to swap you out with them. If they can convince you that you're all of the ways that they feel on the inside, you become that. If you don't have the self-awareness and the self-respect to be able to be like, I don't know if that's me. Like, I don't know if that's a fair characterization of me. When you hear the shit getting played in through your head and then fucking, into, yeah. yeah. If you haven't experienced enough of your own self, and if you haven't spent enough time with yourself to be able to see where your intentions are at and all this, like, it's very difficult to have the mental fortitude. Also, if you just get emotionally broken down all the time, but like, yeah, the mental fortitude to be like, I don't think that is me. I'm not going to accept that in as part of myself. Dude, I was just happily doing this. It was like any criticism that would come in through my head that even kind of seemed right, I was like happy to listen to because I was trying so hard to heal. And so like a whole bunch of these freaking voices would pop into my head with this constant, it was like reactive abuse. It was like constant, constant, constant like criticism. Like ways in which I could be better. And like everybody does have ways in which they could be better. Me included, always and forever. However... However, I'm also like good enough as I am. And I have been since I was born. Like I never did anything to become good enough and I can never do anything to become not good enough. It's like God given. And like, I never have to, I never have to, like life isn't about, life is not a self-improvement project. And I was spending all of my waking hours trying to essentially self-improve out these intrusive ass voices that would pop in my head and swap my shit out. And it would make me completely lose me. And my bits would be in other people. 
And I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know. I would just be happily, I'd be like this, this fucking servant, dude. I'd be like a servant to this shit. And I was basically a washing machine. I was basically like a washing machine. Just doing other people's dirty laundry constantly and not even fucking knowing. I was basically happy with that. Because <laughs> like, I didn't know any better. And only once I started like becoming aware that chakra swapping was a thing and like trying to stay rooted in my own bits, right? Like trying to be able to just breathe and be. Only once I became aware of that did it become like... Totally got derailed. There's a thing poking it through my head and I could feel it. But yeah. So yeah, only once I became aware of it did it become suddenly such a massive struggle to be able to hold any of these bits together. Because I just wasn't aware of this being a thing. I, I like I didn't, I wasn't aware that there was a put together full. Get out! I had been spending very little time with this throughout my life. I've gotten probably a combined total of like a, a few years at most. With like real me, because I didn't. I like it. it like I said, it turns you up. It flips you upside down. Turns you inside out and scatters all of your shit. It had been happening to me. It happened throughout all of school. All of high school, all of, I see my eyes doing this shit right now. Come on. And word. Look at the self. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were in the seeking mode and shit. It's like, shit. I don't know, dude. But like, yeah, I had been, this shit has been happening throughout like my entire fucking life and like a whole bunch of ways in which I think I might have like, yeah, I think my light has been getting completely stamped out for like a whole, like whole ass entire long time. And it's tricky because I was tempted and have been tempted to invest further and deeper into my separateness as a means to an end of breaking free from this. However, it only got me entrenched deeper. And so it's like, it's, it's tricky, but the solution I think is to just try and stay at peace and try and like be assured in your own good enoughness. And like to not accept, at least in these circumstances, when I still have the trauma binds and all this, this yay, when I'm still, yay. The solution is to like, be like, I'm good enough. My ego's good enough. Shit's good enough. I'm good enough as I am. I'm good enough. Now let's, let's focus on it. And I felt that shit fly the fuck out of my head. But like, focus on the actions. Not the chakra swapping, but like getting a job, you know, staying in the present moment, uh, taking care of animals, cleaning, uh, jumping jacks, playing instruments, freaking drawing, um, uh, plants, like tending to shit, meditating, yeah, doing things that, you know, like lead to a prosperous future, good karmic seeds or all that, it, doing those things and trying to be completely and totally present and in the moment and as aware as you possibly can when you're doing these things like make life about that make life about like I, i'm giving like a fucking instruction right now but make do things when when you're doing something like when you're when you're for example when you're for example making the salads for your fucking vegetarian animals in the morning or when you're spritzing animals down or if you're trying to make a thong or even in this youtube video anything it doesn't matter what it's smoking weed fucking it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter what it is whatever you are doing first of all don't do it as a means to an end and do it like with 100 percent awareness don't do anything else while you're doing that when you're doing something only do that if you want to do something else then finish that task and then begin a new one but don't multitask don't be thinking about something while you're doing something like so if i'm in my head thinking about how much i'm pissed about something or trying to fight some voice inside of me no just do the laundry just be there in the moment doing the laundry and don't get bogged down trying to defend explain rationalize any of these things inside of your mind being lost in thought. The key is to take the steps to like job, 
financial stability, financial independence, new apartment, you know, and life goes on. Like, those are the steps. And every step along the way from, and meditation, and as well as, like, you know, trying to be aware and in the present moment as much as possible and all this. <laughs> okay, I felt that shit, dude. And, like, yeah, basically, it's, I'm not perfect, but, like, and also, like, yeah, but, like, yeah, this is the, this is the way. The way is not to give in to any, I need to stop working on who I am. And how good enough who I am is. My identity, the way I see myself, any of this shit. I need to stop working on who I am. And start and continue, actually. Continue honing and refining what it is I do. With awareness. And consciousness and presence. Acting in response. And not out of reactivity. Or because of emotional provocation or something like that. And that's hard, right? Because like, if for most of your life, you've just been accepting any mental criticism that comes in through your head as like true and like something you got to work on. It can be really hard to have the mental fortitude to be like, okay, I'm good enough. I'm gonna just like, in until I'm free from the trauma bondage and yeah, until I can trust my own inner voice again and all this. Yeah, you got to decide that you're good enough. And I already have, but yeah. That you're good enough, that you don't got to work on who you are, that, well, except for, like, in therapy. Like, leave it for therapy. Leave it for therapy. And then live your life when you're not in therapy. And you don't have to put your life on hold until you think that, like, you're healed enough to be around other people. Because the only reason you feel like you're not healed enough to be around other people and to live your own life is because of these intrusive presences and the things that you've been fed and the things that you've accepted about yourself. And yeah, I ain't worse than everybody else for sure. It's just not about comparison. I'm a person. It's hard to put a value judgment on a, li on a life, on a living thing. It's really hard. I don't think it's yeah. And I understand this. And like, yeah, So yeah, it's back. It seems backwards. It seems like the opposite of what I've been doing for, you know, the way that I've been, the ways in which I've been trying to heal myself and to grow and better myself for a long time have been involving a lot of stuff like the thing I, the things that i've been trying to heal a whole lot of the things that have been trying to heal out of me because i can accept darkness in me i won't accept darkness that involves hurting other people like i won't allow those actions to play through me if i can say anything about it if i have any say so bro but yeah that's the difference but if if the reason i even felt like i was doing that in the first place is because of someone else and it wasn't like me And like, yeah, the solution would be to stop doing their laundry. To find real you. Through love and acceptance. And then to begin doing your laundry, your internal healing and all this. When you're in a environment and a mental place, etc. Where that is a safe and like trustable thing to do. And until that point... Like, real healing probably can't happen like that. So, I think for once in my life, I think I'm going to have to decide until I can move out anyway that I'm healed enough. Healed enough to live my own life. And I need to continue being as aware as I can and in the present moment and all this. Yes, I do. And it's my favorite thing to do is to be right here right now and to just be. And that's what I'm going to continue aiming at. Because I know right action comes with consciousness.
And yeah, it, I, I'm resolved in no longer using my separateness, my separateness as a means to replacing transformative action. So my identity, I've noticed my ego loves doing this. Anytime I notice something I gotta do, like, like oh, you're, you know, you really should take that trash out or some shit like that or sweep or vacuum or whatever. If I don't like want to do it, <laughs> like if I, if I, if I don't want to do it, one of my egos go to is to essentially start like, like that's what I'll start thinking about, like my spiritual path and like, <laughs> you know, like bringing up my old accomplishments from the past and shit like that. Like, okay, but like I've done this, this and that and this and that. Yeah, it's avoidance, it's avoidance. I'm like, yeah, oh, I feel this, I feel this going on. And like, yeah, it, while I'm here and until my mental fortitude and my internal resilience and like my own willpower and shit, can okay, yay, which comes with sleep and all this as well. Hey, I think for once in my life, I'm going to have to decide that I'm healed enough to live my own life. And I know I, I have faith in myself and I trust myself that I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody else. And if I can see ways that I've been behaving, and I can, I, 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 can, I can see this type of behavior anyway. I couldn't see it before. I, I wasn't aware of it. But now that I am aware of it, it, all I really can do is continue to be aware and like catch it anytime I can and to fix it anytime I can which is as soon as I catch it. And like, yeah, I feel like I'm very much like getting kind of washed through at this point, but like, yeah, all, like all I really can do is continue going to therapy and being aware. And I, I'm not going to consider myself to, I'm not going to consider myself to be a narcissist. And I'm also not going to, not going to label anybody else in my life as a narcissist either. Cause one, I'm not a psychiatrist and I actually don't have the credentials to be able to label other people in my life as narcissists. I, I just don't know enough to be able to. I don't. I haven't done the training or anything like that. And I haven't been diagnosed as one. My therapist doesn't think I am one. I've only heard it from these intrusive presences that play through my insides. So I'm like, chip. I don't think I'm going to put value judgments on myself or others as 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 best as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and consider us all to be people. And people are gray. Everybody is. And anybody who pretends like they're not, anybody who pretends like all the bad must be and not them at all, yeah, people are people. I'm a people. People are flawed. I am flawed. They are as well. That, well and good. It's within natural order. And yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the label Chuck the Fuck Outie for a while. And stop dwelling on it and do my best to just pay attention and be present and conscious. I think that's the way. I think that's the way. And I, that's what I found last year when I decided to do this too. Like once I decided that like, okay, like I've, I, I've, I've, I've tried to heal it out of me and I've tried to, like, it's destroying my brain and destroying my mental health. I need to start, like, getting my attention away from this. Yeah, things get, things get better. Attention away from the thing poking in through my head. Attention away from feeding into the intrusive thoughts with my engagement. Check. And more into my actions in the present moment. Anytime I've decided to get my attention oriented properly again, life indeed does get better. And yeah, and um, there's a, there's a giant massive bubble thing behind my head again. So yeah, for any chakra swapping that did go on in this video, I'm gonna be spending some time after this, I'm sure. Hopefully not five or six hours again. Trying to put my shit back together and give back whatever don't belong to me, but it, it, it. I wish this shit wouldn't happen. I wish this was something I didn't have to deal with. I wish, yeah, I'm sure everybody in this position feels like that too. 
Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's see it. It. That's fifty-five minutes of trying to essentially confront my ego. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And um, I'm looking forward to being able to. To aiming once again. I'm not looking forward to being able to do this, but I'm setting the intention to observe without judgment for both myself and others. Like not just regarding me, but everyone else to check, to observe without judgment and to live in love and to do no harm. And I'm not perfect and I don't always hit the mark, but that's where I'm gonna keep aiming. So, and I'm also good enough, but yeah, namaste, peace out. Oh, by the way, by the way, I've never explained this before, but before I go, this symbol, I know it, it, for one, it's a trishula, but it means something, dude. It fucking means something. The reason I do this shit. Yin eye, yang eye, conscious ego, thread that connects conscious ego to your perceptual center. Yay. This is me like making the mind, the, the shape of a put together mind with my hand. And it like holds the connection between here and my perception. It represents unity beneath complexity. And yeah, that's why I do this symbol. And also because, like, yeah, try to love. But, like, yeah, okay, that was so y'all.